Yo, what's up, Giants fans, Hub Watchers, YouTube and Rumble subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back at it again after like a month with a New York Giants video. But have no fear, hopefully, my schedule is set now and I should be having up videos on Monday and Tuesday. No promises, but that's what I am aiming for. And with this particular video, this is something I've been wanting to talk about for about two weeks now. So, Without further ado, let's get into it. Aziz Ojolari, a couple weeks ago, was listed by several media outlets as a potential breakout candidate for the New York Giants to go into his second year and have a great season. And I, for one, completely agree. You guys know that I am 100% an Aziz Ojolari stan. I mean, my name in the Discord is actually Aziz Ojolari stan to this day. It was just supposed to be a one-time thing for his rookie year, but I left it because why not? And his rookie year after the Giants drafted him in the second round, he did not disappoint at all. He had a 17.8% pass rush win percentage, 28 total pressures, 8 sacks, 13 QB hits, 29 solo tackles, and 49 combined tackles, played all 17 games started 13 only i'm not sure what the reason for starting 13 only was i to my memory i don't remember any major injury happening to aziz maybe they just started lorenzo carter over him for some reason i'd have to check in on that but if it was kind of a dumb reason i'm not surprised y'all <laughs> that old coaching staff did make a lot of questionable decisions when we look back at it now but his rookie year was something that is super underrated and not talked about enough, in my opinion. In fact, when I was looking for clips to use for this video, there is no type of Aziz Ojolari highlight tape to, to grab B-roll from. You know, you'd expect a guy that in his rookie year breaks and holds the Giants franchise sack record, and that was not far behind in, in terms of rookies for sacks in their first year. You'd expect him to get a little bit more attention. Even just regular Aziz Ojolari I don't know videos the only thing i'm finding is from the giants website and the giants youtube channel he seems to be a very much a unknown commodity amongst nfl fans he needs to get a little more attention eight sacks in a rookie year is no small feat at all and the thing is and this may play a reason as to why there's not much attention on him one obviously he was on a really bad losing team but two he is not yet or at least I should say in his rookie year, he was not yet a dominant presence on the edge. I know this sounds like I'm con contradicting myself, but go back and look at the games. Even though he did get those eight sacks, even though he did get that pass rush win percentage, the QB hits, the pressures, it wasn't like he was a force to be reckoned with off the edge yet. You know what I'm saying? He, he would win his sets to get to the quarterback sometimes. He got lucky. A good amount of times he had help from the other side. But as a non-dominant threat, he manages to build up this good number, which gives me a little bit more faith that should he develop in year two, which I am putting faith that he will develop in year two into somewhat or just plain out a dominant edge threat. I'm expecting quite a bit more from Aziz Ojolari. Not alone that, we're talking natural progressions and whatnot. He was very, very young. I believe he's only now entering his age 21 season. We saw the 10 pounds of pure muscle that he packed onto his body. They say it's 10. It looked like it's 20 to me. The guy is bigger than Andrew Thomas, our left tackle right now, but also coaching staff. And I'm not referring to Don Wing Martindale right now. I'm referring to Andre Patterson, a little uh, lesser known person that we added as our defensive line coach that who was previously with the Vikings from 2014 to 2021. And let me tell you all why Andre Patterson is probably the biggest addition to this defensive line that's not a player. This man was with the Vikings initially in 2014, right? First year under head coach Mike Zimmer. He led a strong defensive line in 2015, heralded and headed by a little known guy, Daniil Hunter. One of the more underrated pass rushers, but definitely very much so consistent and scary threat from the edge in the NFL. Does anybody want to know around what time Daniil Hunter got drafted? Oh, that's right. 2014, 2015. 
Does anybody want to know who worked with the Neil Hunter directly and developed him into the player that he is today? Oh yeah, that's right. Andre Patterson. And I'm not just saying this because I'm matching up years. I'm matching up, you know, job description with players. I'm saying this because you saw it when Andre Patterson left the Vikings this offseason. The Neil Hunter was extremely sad and he made that known on Twitter. He wanted this man to stay. Viking fan thought that he was going to be their next defensive coordinator. We got somebody on this defensive line that should work wonders for our two young edges, not just the one in Aziz Ojolari, and the entire defensive line in general. And I mentioned two young edge rushers because, of course, reason number three, I guess quickly recapping one and two, the strong start with a rookie year where he didn't even hit his full potential and the addition of a great defensive line coach. Reason number three is the addition of legitimate edge help on the other side. Don't get me wrong. I love Quincy Roche. I, I hope that Quincy Roche stays with us as a great rotational defensive edge rusher i'm trying to get as many good edge rushers as possible just as many guys i could get to the quarterback i really want to get back to that 20 uh i was about to say 2007 2007 and 2011 type defensive lines where one guy could come in and out and we're just getting to the quarterback no matter what and, and if we got three people right now that could do that i'm extremely happy however quincy roche got none on cave on thibodeau all right cave on thibodeau the fifth pick in the draft Somebody that probably has the highest ceiling in the entire 2021 draft. Somebody that could make a legitimate run for defensive rookie of the year. Kayvon Thibodeau, monster at the college level. Absolute monster. Just pure athleticism and talent. He does have, you know, good moves to his bag. He does need to develop a little bit more. But coming right in, he's just as good as Aziz off the bat. While Aiden Hutchinson was graded by, you know, most of the experts as a little bit better, Thibodeau, in my opinion, is going to see a lot more attention, not just because of the market, but because I think his skill set is going to lead to him getting a bit more sacks very quickly than Aiden Hutchinson will. His talent, speed, and rushing ability off the edge alone would allow him to beat a lot of the lower half of NFL tackles. And edge rushing is a two-man job, so I'm not going to focus too much on Kayvon Thibodeau here shifting back to Aziz Ojolari depending on where the Giants run him this year whether it's on the strong side or the weak side I don't I really don't think it matters because they're gonna have to pay some attention to the other man on the other side they can't spend too much time double teaming Aziz even if they you know even if let's say they do have a little bit of a double team on Aziz, they can't do it all game because you still got Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence in the middle who you got to worry about. And we saw last year how many double teams both of those guys got and how many holes and stuff that opposing teams got away with when playing us. Aziz Ojolari last year was successful with his one patented move that he carried over directly from college. It was like a swipe and a chop and then he got to the quarterback with it. I'm talking about he's going to get his bend now. I'm talking about Andre Patterson is going to get him to develop maybe some type of pushback, swivel move. Who knows what he's going to help add to his repertoire right now. The strength obviously is going to come into play because we. what I'm thinking of Aziz, I'm thinking as a really athletic pass rusher. But we're talking about just improvement from a season where he had eight sacks as a rookie, where he was not a dominant threat, where the coaching staff honestly did not know what they were doing that much in 2021. And we saw that, especially on the defensive side of the football. Patrick Graham, I, I love that guy. He did a great job for us in 2020. 2021 made him look really, really bad with, with good reason. That team was not performing up to standard and the players looked completely out of place. Or like all of them did. But you got a now the better coach. You got a scheme that actually might help in bolstering some numbers, given the amount of times Wink Martindale is going to blitz. Sometimes that could help bolster everybody's numbers when it comes to pass rush in general. And you have legitimate help on the other side. So is Aziz Ojolari a breakout candidate for the Giants? Yes, 100%. What does that breakout equal? I'm saying let's see if he can get to double digit sacks, at least 10. Now, I know that's just a two sack increase, but you got to keep in mind now they are going to be paying him a bit more attention given what he did in his rookie year. And also, 
I'm expecting those pressure numbers to take a good leap. I'm expecting those QB numbers to take a good leap. I'm expecting basically every other metric to go all the way up and I'm expecting him to be a legitimate threat. I'm expecting quarterbacks to be looking for him when they're at the line of scrimmage. I'm expecting them to be going up into the pocket. They're out here scanning. I'm, I'm expecting the center to be pointing out this man if possible. Maybe they get a couple chip blocks in there. I'm expecting a really good things from Aziz Ojolari in year two. And I'm not just saying that as a big fan of him. I really think it's possible. But that's it for now, guys. Let me know what you think. Put your thoughts down below. Like, share, subscribe, and I'm out. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thank you for checking out my channel, The Hub, here on Giants YouTube. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you hear every time I put out a video. Like it, share, and subscribe, and I'm out.